Joel, in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, Raven Crossbow. And in this model, we have the R10. Is that right? The R10 is uh, what we are talking in this uh, episode. Stay with us. Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Thank you for tuning in to our channel. If you like what you see, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing the Raven R10 crossbow. Joel, this one, this unit happens to be yours. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I just got this this year, and um, it's it's new to the two dumbass hunting family. I know you have the exact same bow, maybe a, a year younger. Yep, year um, older. Year older, excuse me. And uh, I, I thought we would just kind of review it for our audience here. We're again, we're not sponsored by Raven or any any crossbow company as far as that go so this is just um uh, you know our o open honest uh review of a uh, hunting tool that we that we use so before we get into that let's let's talk about why we own crossbows right so um i'll start with myself uh i have an old matthew switchback which i'm super happy with uh it's it's really served me well but I had a uh, bad rotator cuff that had come finally to roost. I'd been, it had been nagging at me that I went and had repaired, and hence I've now moved on to uh, crossbows. How about you for yourself? Yeah, very similar. Not uh, not a cuff, but uh, just I think achy uh, arthritic uh, shoulders from playing football in college and and whatnot and um, i love bow hunting there's everything about bow hunting i just love that time of year i love the hunting approach and um but i was missing some shots i couldn't hold my bow back i'm a was a bow tech guy and i uh, just couldn't hold my bow tech back long enough as i wanted to and and uh, i was just getting sloppy in my shooting and uh just kind of put you know mate if i was going to hunt bow season anymore i had to go to a crossbow so is this your first crossbow? First crossbow I had um, is a 10-point Titan SS, um, which I've had for about, we still have it. My wife shoots it now, and um, we, we, we still shoot deer with it, and, uh, but it's about five years old. So this would be a good co comparison. So you, you're a seasoned crossbow owner, and uh, you're going to see the pros and cons of a couple different good brands. So let's let's dig into it. Yeah. So um, let me grab it here and see if we can uh, pull it up. But uh, what I was telling you off camera with the crossbow is, if this was your first crossbow, you're you're gonna fall in love with this, and 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 you should, rightfully so. Raven makes a great product, and they're really doing some things revolutionary, I think, and we'll and we'll talk about that. But uh, but there's also some things because it's not my first crossbow that I, I really like what in this case Ten Point was doing instead of um, instead of Raven. But let's go through a few of the stats real quick on the R10. Uh, super fast bow that shoots. It's again it's the Raven R10 shoots 400 feet per second. Um, my Titan SS I think was 325 or 350. But yeah, my point of view is anything over. You know, any how fast does a crossbow have to be? You know, um, I know they're competing for speed, but uh, super fast, um, 11 inch power stroke. Uh, the difference when you pull this pull this back is only 11 inches, and um, 142 feet foot pounds of kinetic energy when it shoots. It, it, to crank this, um, it's uh, 12 pounds of cranking power. Uh, to crank it and um, with um, axle to axle from from this to this is is 10 inches uncocked and only six inches when it's cocked so it is small uh, 6.8 pounds so 6.8 pounds it's uh, small it's compact and it's it's light it's got a scope comes ready mounted with your scope are you happy with the scope yeah yes I am um, 
my opinion on scopes on a crossbow is one you got to have them that's why you shoot a crossbow but um, i really think the optics on a crossbow make and break the difference between some of these crossbows this is lighted it's got red and green dots on it uh, battery powered so when it, low light comes you can turn those on and still see through your scope and and more importantly your aiming point um, and then it's got you know the built-in protectors for the scope great great um, visibility great eye relief on this and um, it's um, measured out to with MO, MOAs all the way out to a hundred yards I would never shoot 100 yards even if I was going to shoot 100 yards you're going to need a rest to shoot off and things like that but I have shot it over 50 yards and it's it's dead on dead on yeah I usually find the limiting uh, accuracy is the user and my own eyes so uh, that's my own that's not your own it's my own too <laughs> so uh, but uh, I stated earlier with this quiver you got to make sure I'm right-handed. You got to make sure that the quiver is off the bow, or it's on the left-hand side of the bow, um, since I'm going to be cranking on the right-hand side. What I'm pointing to here is, is where the handle inserts into, and it's ambidextrous, so there's one for right hand and one for left hand. When the trigger mechanism is attached to the string, it's as simple as putting weight down on the front of the bow to hold it securely, and cranking. Always make sure that you've got proper weight and control of the uh, crossbow at all times. When you get to the end of it, you'll feel it tighten up and you'll just go back just a little bit and uh, the handle comes right off. It's that simple. The other feature that this crossbow has, and I think it's the the best feature it has, is um, there's very little, if any, contact to the arrow um, when it's in the rail itself. In fact, it doesn't touch the rail. So I'm just demonstrating here that uh, when you put the arrow in, it snaps in really hard. And then once the arrow is in there, it only touches these two Teflon rollers at the front. And then when the arrow is in the trigger mechanism, and there's nothing else underneath the arrow that's touching it. Very nice, very efficient. When you're decocking the crossbow, um, it's the opposite of, uh, of tightening it. Um, you put your uh, crank in there and then in the stock there's a little black lev lever that you push uh, that releases the ratchet you hold the black button in and crank counterclockwise again this is really easy to lose control of so make sure you do this slow and in control um, and it's really simple let's, let's kind of talk through a couple things um, one is uh, when you load this um, it's got a <laughs> crank let me pull that crank off here And uh, the crank, the crank uh, goes here. It's built in, and um, your actual trigger sy system actually connects to your bow here. Different than my Titan SS, and I know this is getting more and more popular. But the R10, or at least Raven, this is one of the first bows that um, had uh, this type of system where you, you draw back your bow by cranking on this and it pulls back the bow and the trigger system all, all together. So, why don't you hand me that? Uh, just a couple of little things on this on this crank mechanism. It's got a, a built-in slip clutch that's right in here, so it, it really is very slick, and uh, you have a little button behind it. Um, in, the, in the stock right yep, here? Yep, right, right there, so that when you're cranking, it actually will make it silent. So when you get out of the field, you can you can wind this back, which is pretty important. A lot of times I'll do it in my garage and have it already pre-cocked, um, and I don't even bother with that. But uh, the one thing to watch is, is if your thumb were to slip on this, this thing's going to go, and it's going to do some damage on you. I've had that happen to me once. 
it um, not only damaged to you, but um, damaged your bow. So it, it is a little trickier. Uh, again, the stats say 12 pounds of cranky power on this. I, I would say it's at least 12 pounds. Um, and this handle to me is just a little longer than it needs to be. It, in my opinion, you'd have a little more control over this if it was shorter. I'm sure they make it this length because of the leverage. Um, but again, comparing this to my my 10 point, uh, my 10 point's like five pounds uh, to pull it back. You can barely tell you're cranking on anything. This one, it takes some it it, it takes some focused effort to uh, crank it and and keep it in control. So that's uh, that's cool. some feedback on it. Yep, some feedback. Um, the I think the most innovative thing on this crossbow is other all other crossbows including my titan uh, when you pull this mechanism back you put the arrow in here there's a rail system that it, that the arrow the bolt sets right into the groove on that rail system so it's in contact with that rail system then it comes back into the trigger and away you go a little bit on that is the with with the arrow you have to have that knock down versus up it's a, it's a little anti or not, not intuitive and if you don't it's just going to rip off your your fletchings yeah uh so i've i've forgotten that a few times and i've had a few fletchings go flying so just a little fyi so what uh raven has done is, is they they don't have a rail here they have two little white teflon bearings here that the front of your arrow sets on and so the arrow is making contact here on about a quarter of an inch of two Teflon ball bearings, and then it's connected to your trigger mechanism back here. So there's literally no um, friction. friction or uh, anything to, to cause the, the bolt problems uh, when you pull the trigger. I really like that, it's really neat. Now, it is a little tough to get your arrow in there safely. It, I mean, again, crossbows are extremely dangerous, you can see how easy it would be to get your hand and wrist in there and lose it, a finger. You're going to lose something if the string, if it goes off accidentally. Um, but as you know, the key to this is getting your arrow in this uh, from the front and down. And then it's, you really have to push on that arrow to get it engaged in your trigger. Especially at the beginning, I've, I've found after about 20 or 30 times of getting the arrow in there, it loosens up a little bit more. But if you don't have that arrow, completely notched in your trigger system deer comes by you're ready to shoot it you pull the trigger and nothing's going to happen because it's not uh, fully seated in that tree you had that happen uh, i have not had it happen i know someone that has okay very close to me that has okay and she, and she was not very happy let's just narrow it down <laughs> even further than that but uh, so one of the things i will say with that mechanism uh raven had some I don't know if quality concerns is the right way, but some safety concerns with regards to the arrows and knocks and leveraging into and seeding into that. And I can't remember, to be honest with you, what the color was, but it was all around the knock. And I think it was a white knock, but again, don't quote me. But these orange knocks are the ones that they recommend now that if you were to buy a used a used bow with some used arrows it's the, only the orange knocks that they want you to use and the other thing i would also say is is these knocks have not a i mean just like a bow they they have a limited lifetime on them because they're you want them to be seated into that so if it starts to feel loose just from a safety perspective change out the arrow yeah, you want to talk about some pros and cons again. Both of us, both of us shoot this same crossbow, so um, you know what would be some of the pros to this crossbow. Uh, so I like the fact. That, I mean, this I'm only a first time owner, so I don't have the comparison that you have. But I like the ability to be able to uncock the crossbow, so I can actually use that with that release underneath the trigger, and I can release the tension and pull that back and to me that's a big plus I, I, to me it's like the one of the bigger pluses um because the alternative is at the end of every hunt which is most hunts you're going to come back you got a target you're going to shoot 
a field point arrow into it to disengage it, release the energy on it, and uh, then the next time you're going to crank it back up. So I do like that idea of being able to decock it. Um, it. It does a pretty good job on it. Again, it's all about keeping in control of that thing. There's a lot of... There's a, stored energy. There's a lot of stored energy in there when you start that that uh, it takes a little time to get used to. Other pros? Um, well, I I mean, the scope's excellent. Uh, I've got no qualms with that. It lights up very well. I would tell you that uh, you got to make sure you shut that off. Uh, otherwise, um, it lasts about two, three days, and it, then, then you're going to need a new battery. It's good to have what I... <laughs> I know this by heart, the 3023 <laughs> Energizer batteries, that, and you need two of them to go in there because you're going to leave them on, right? <laughs> That's so, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, really, I, I thought it was a con um, about the weight of it. But again, it's my first crossbow. So you had a different perspective. Yeah. Um, I, th I think my 10 point is, is close to 10 pounds, and it's, it's wider, much wider and bigger so uh this compared to my 10 point and i think honestly most early generation crossbows this is you know very manageable very very light i'm not sure i'm sure there's probably some crossbows out there in the five pound range but uh, again at 6.8 this is right up there so i've got another con and i don't know how to how i'd fix it but something about the quiver the quiver when i'm when i'm trying to hold the the bow up to shoot and it pivots nicely but a couple of things i've had numerous arrows fall out of the quiver uh while i'm up in the stand which is or get loose it's just very frustrating to me um also about the quiver is just where you, i mean you're focused on where you're going to put your hands and making sure you don't get above the rail and this is right there and where it's at so my process has become hey I always take the inside arrow on the quiver so that I have the most amount of space for my hands and that seems to I'm going to say make it satisfactory for me but there's an opportunity there to improve this how about yourself I do not like the quiver at all um not so much as far as holding the arrows, but uh, the way it's, where it's located on the bow, I'd rather have my quiver perpendicular to the bow than, than horizontal. And uh, the biggest thing I've got is, is when this thing's cocked, it, there's a ton of energy on this. It's pretty difficult to get that quiver and the handle as far as that go in here uh, safely um, when, it's, when it's cocked. That, that's my biggest uh, concern. I would agree. Yeah. The other thing I've got on, the, it's really not so much a knock on the, the crossbow as it is the, the arrows and then kind of the, the system, is that uh, these are lighted knocks on these um, three arrows. First of all, they're going to cost you about 100 bucks. Not about. They're going to cost you 100 bucks for three of them um, lighted. And when they do light, the only way to turn them off is uh, you got to go out and buy a, one of these knock. Um, it's actually an arrow puller um, that, that will turn the, uh, the knock off. So, you know, it's not that big a deal, but uh, I got to carry this little arrow puller around with me. Again, not a big deal, but uh, why? You know why? So, again, I'm not, I'm not picking on things, but I think if you're going to consider buying these, I think these are things to consider uh, when you're, you know, when you're testing different crossbows. All right. Anything yeah. else? Would you recommend it? Would you recommend this cross crossbow? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm a hundred percent. Definitely would ask people if you're looking for a crossbow, you should at least shoot the R10 or a Raven crossbow. Super precise, super accurate, and very repeatable. What's that? What's that going to cost you? Uh, it's going to be about thirteen hundred bucks, you know, before you start adding a case and uh, you know a, another set of arrows to it. So you know you're all in probably at fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, it's a nice bow, a lot of money. But uh, all right, anything else? No.
All right, we'll include, we'll, you know, as, as you've already seen in this episode, we'll, we'll include some shooting and cocking and decocking of this to try to uh, give you some visuals on that. But um, as always, Tim, be, be safe, safe, have fun, fun and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.